Hello students, myself Rakhi Kumari, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad, affiliated to Dr. E.P.J. Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. Today in the lecture series of Microwave and Radar Engineering, we will go through the traveling wave tube that is TWT and the backward wave oscillator that is BWO. Already in the last lectures, we have covered the various type of microwave sources that is our two cavity cholesterol, our reflex cholesterol and the magnetron. So, before proceeding towards the TWT and the BWO, you should uh, once again revise the lectures on cholesterol that is the two cavity cholesterol and reflex cholesterol and the magnetron because the basic principles which uh, runs the TWT and BWT. BWO is also the same which we have covered in the last lecture. So, if you are remembering the basic principle in the cholesterol and other microwave devices sources are the velocity modulation. That means already we have discussed about the, uh, learned about the various type of modulation technique and one of that is the velocity modulation which is very important and the common for the microwave sources. So, before proceeding further further into the TWT, first look out the difference between TWT and the cholesterol. So, the first difference, the interaction of the electron beam and the RF field in the TWT is continuous over the entire length of the circuit, but the interaction in the cholesterol occurs only at the gap of a few resonant cavity. So, just try to remember that in the two cavity cholesterol, we have a first buncher cavity and at the end we have a catcher cavity. And if you are able to remember that in the reflex cholesterol, there exists a only one cavity. This is the case for the two cavity cholesterol. And if you remember the reflex cholesterol, there is only one cavity. And what is the significance of this cavity either in the two cavity cholesterol and the reflex cholesterol? That at this particular point only there exists a interaction between the RF signal and the electrons, modulated electron. And at this case only the electrons give up its kinetic energy, the energy which the electron gain during the process that is give its uh, earned kinetic energy which is represented by half mv square to the RF signal which has to be amplified so that the RF signal get amplified. So, these are the only places in the case of a cholesterol where the RF signal get interaction with the electron, but in the case of the TWT the interaction between the RF signal and the electron beam occurs throughout the entire length of the circuit. So, this is one of the major difference between the TWT and the cholesterol because already we have known that uh, the velocity modulation and the transfer of uh, kinetic energy to the RF signal so as it can be amplified is the common principle in the working of the either we talk about the TWT or the cholesterol. So, the common thing we knew then in that case we have to know the differences also. So, the first major difference which arises is this one. The wave in the TWT is a propagating wave, but the wave in the cholesterol is not. Now, again uh, two thing arises that a TWT has basically got two type. One is the coupled cavity TWT and the second one is the slow wave structure TWT. Again I am repeating the TWT has got two parts, first one is the coupled cavity TWT and the second one is the slow wave structure TWT. In a coupled cavity TWT, there is a coupling effect between the cavity, whereas each cavity in the cholesterol operates independently. 
So what is the another difference? In the slow wave structure TWT, there is, there is no existence of the cavity. So again I am repeating that in the uh, slow wave structure TWT, there is no existence of the cavity and that is the most important type of a TWT and which we are going to discuss in this lecture. Another type of a TWT is the coupled cavity TWT. So, in the coupled cavity TWT, there is a coupling effect between the cavities which is present in the TWT. But in the clistron cavities, there is no coupling effect and all the cavities which are present either in the two cavity or there also exists a multi cavity clistron or in the reflex, the reflex clistron there is a single. So, in no one there exists a coupling between the cavities. So, see these are the three major differences between the TWT and the clistron and this can also be asked in your question papers for the two marks questions. Now comes the construction of the travelling wave tube. So, in the construction of a travelling tube uh, before going to uh, I am asking you how many types of TWT exist? First one is the coupled cavity TWT and the second one is the slow wave structure TWT. So, in this lecture we are going to have the slow wave structure TWT. So, what is the basic construction of that? What is the? There is the first one is the heater supply and it is the our cathode. So, what is going to happen here? That electron is generated. and this electrons are instructed to move inside the this whole structure of the TWT. And if you are able to see this is a coil like structure in between. What is this coil like structure? This coil like structure is the slow wave structure. And in between here exists a attenuator also. You are able to see, just have a look. These are the attenuators. So, another most important first one is the cathode, second one is the slow wave structure, third one is the attenuator. And the other one, this is the focusing beam. our focusing electron beam. So, whenever someone asks you to draw the construction of a travelling wave tube, first of all you mention the cathode, second one is the slow wave structure, third one is the attenuator and the fourth one is the electron beam focusing magnet and then comes the collector. And what is the other one? RF input is given in this side and it is collected this way. So, and the other thing which has been represented here basically are used for providing the biasing to the TWT circuit. Now, though so just have a description what we have studied uh, seen in the diagram. The helical consists of a man of a electron gun and a slow wave structure which I have shown you first that is electron gun and the slow wave structure is the major part of a, a, our helical travelling wave tube. Why it is called as the helical travelling wave tube? Because the slow wave structure which is used here is a helical shape. The electron P beam, uh, electron gun, what is the function of electron gun? Already we have seen in the electron gun in all the microwave sources, for example, in the TW, in our clistrons and in the magnetrons. So, electron gun produces what? A narrow beam of electron. Then comes the focusing plate. If you are able to see the diagram again, the focusing plate is basically our electron beam focusing plane which are provided at the both side of the our helical structure. So, its function is to maintain the electron beam inside the tube so that it can does not go outside of the tube. So, the main function of the focusing plate is to keep the electron or focuses the electrons on the inside the tube. The positive terminal is provided to the coil with respect to the cathode terminal. See what is the significance of a positive and the negative plates. The positive to potential is provided to the coil with respect to the cathode terminal. So, what will happen now? Ki the electron which moves from the comes from the cathode will move towards the helix, helix 
because it is more positive as compared to the cathode, but this electron has to also has to move away to from the helix to the collector. So, what to happen? Collector has to be more positive as compared to the helix, so that it can move up to the collector. So, if you are able to see the structure again, this cathode, if we compare the positivity of a terminal, this is less positive as compared to helix and this helix is again less positive as compared to the collector, where the electron has to be collected further. So, this is a also important point, so that it can move aligned, it does not distract here and there. In order to restrict the electron beam inside the tube, a DC magnetic field that is also the our focusing plane, the function of a DC magnetic field is provided by this only the electron beam focusing plate. So, whenever we say the DC magnetic field if, uh, function and the focusing plate function, this remains the same because magnetic field is provided by the focusing plate. So, uh, inside a DC magnetic plate is applied between the traveling path by the help of magnets, which is our focusing plate. The function of the focusing plate and the function of the DC magnetic field is same since this DC magnetic field is provided by this focusing plate. The signal which is needed to be amplified is provided at one end of the helix present adjacent to the electron gun, while the amplified signal is achieved at the opposite end of the helix. We have already seen, here we are have going to apply the RF input and here from here we can have it back. What is the, uh, now the comes the attenuator, attenuator is present along both the sides of the traveling wave tube. This is so because the traveling wave amplifies are high gain devices. So, in case of poor load matching condition, oscillation get build up inside the tube due to reflection. Thus, in order to restrict the generation of oscillation inside the tube, attenuators are used. So, before proceeding forward, just have a recap of the function of attenuator. So, what is an attenuator? Attenuator are basically, uh, and what is the function of matching conditions. If you are able to recall, because I have already discussed in our for the uh, previous lectures that, just have a look. Okay, what is the matching condition? We know that whenever we want the matching condition, matching condition is the condition when the input load is equivalent to the output load. So, what is the condition in that? In this condition, when the input load is equal to the output load, the L waves travels and it goes further, but if the input load is not equal to the output load, what is the condition arise? Reflection of waves occur. When Z L is not equal to Z in, then in that case reflection of waves occur. And where this reflection of wave occur? It will further comes to the originating circuit. So, this will dis of course disrupt the working of the normal circuit. So, it has to be avoided. So, that for this condition, because in somewhere during that wave traveling, we have comes the condition where input load is not equivalent to the output load. For that condition, attenuators are placed. So, as to in the condition when the match condition are not achieved, that is done by the attenuator, because it is a very high gain devices. So, and one thing, one thing more, whenever the reflections occur, oscillations takes place, backward reflection is necessary for oscillation to take place. We, we have to avoid the oscillation, we have to restrict the generation of oscillation because it is the amplifying device, not a oscillating device. The magnetron which we have studied in the last lecture is the oscillator. The reflex clistron which we have already studied in the last to last lecture is also oscillator, but this is the amplifying de device and we have to avoid the oscillations and in that case we have to avoid the backward reflections. And now comes the slow wave structure, what is the need of a slow wave structure? So, the need of a slow wave structure arises from the fact that the RF signal which has to be amplified is the velocity of that signal is very much higher than the electron velocity which is emitted by the electron gun. So, what we are going to do in the velocity modulation, this electron during the velocity modulation gains the uh, energy a half mv square, this velocity is increased and it supply, give its kinetic energy 
to the RF signal so as to amplify it. But in this case, what is going to happen? That velocity of electron, uh, electromagnetic wave is much more higher as compared to the velocity of the electron being generated by the electron. So, how can this be happen? So, so RF amp, uh, wave amp applied to the input of a T w to propagate, propagate, propagates with the speed of light while the propagating velocity of the electron beam inside the tube is comparatively smaller than the velocity of RF wave. So, if we try to accelerate that means, we want if we increase the velocity of a electron beam, how much it will increase? Whatever proportion it will increase, but it will always be less than the velocity of light that it means that it can be accelerated only to a fraction of a velocity of light. So, it is better to reduce the velocity of applied RF input in order to match the velocity of the electron beam. So, what we can do? We can, it is better to reduce the velocity of the RF input in order to match the velocity of the electron beam, but is it possible? So, we are making it possible with the help of a slow wave structure. So, how can it be possible? So, to decrease the velocity of the RF signal. So, we are actually increasing the distance travelled by the RF signal. If any signal propagates in a straight line and if a signal propagates this way, what is the difference between these two conditions? The time it reaches, the version of increasing the velocity or decreasing the velocity means what? It will reach the destination earlier and it will reach the destination late. So, we are not actually reducing the velocity, basically we are increasing the distance travelled by the RF signal. So, this in this case we are actually increasing the distance travelled by the RF signal and the, st uh, the structure which are basically used to increase the distance travelled by the RF signal is the slow wave structure. So, these are the some common slow wave structures and this is because the helical shape of the structure, the wave travels a much larger distance than the distance travelled by the beam. So, who will reach? The both will reach at the same time. The electron will beam will travel the straight line distance and the RF signal has to travel a curvy line, have to travel through the helix or with the slow wave structure. So, both will reach the distance at the same time, at the output at the same time. So, that there always there exists an interaction between the electron beam and the RF signal which is the main purpose of developing the TWT and this as has been achieved by the help of slow wave structure. So, do not be get confused that we are reducing the, uh, the RF velocity, RF signal velocity less than the speed of the light but we actually we are increasing the distance travelled by it. Now, the ratio of the phase velocity V p along the pitch of the phase velocity along the coil is given by this equation, where p is the helix pitch that is the distance between the two adjacent helix structure, helical structure and d is the diameter of the helix, this is the diameter of the helix and psi is the pitch angle. So, what is the psi basically? When we take a single helix and we represent p by this structure or uh, in a form of a right triangle and pi d that is the circumference somewhere it is also written as the c that is circumference do not confuse with the velocity of light this is the circumference. So, that is why I have represented it with, it with a pi d then psi is the angle here this is the right triangle and this is the angle which is represented as psi and in this case we have pi square plus this uh, hypotenuse of is of the line under root p square plus pi d square. So, this is the basic structure need of a slow wave structure and how it is helpful in the construction of a our travelling wave tube. Now, this uh, applic working remains easy for us. The applied RF signal produces electric field inside the tube due to the applied positive half the electron beam experience is accelerative force same as in the case of a klystron when the RF signal is at the positive the acceleration of electron takes place and when it is on the negative side our velocity decreases. 
So, on the negative half of the input apply decelerative force on the moving electron, same as in the case of a, our klystron which we have studied. This is said to be a velocity modulation because there is a, this a change in the velocity that is why it is called as the velocity modulation or experience a difference velocity inside the. However, the slowly traveling wave inside the tube exhibit a continuous interaction with the electron beam. So, how it experiences the continuous, in continuous interaction with the electron beam? Already we have discussed in the need of a slow wave structure. Due to the continuous interaction, the electron moving with high velocity transfer their energy to the wave inside the tube and thus slow down and so it gets slowed down. And where the slow moving electrons are collected, same as in the case of a two cavity klystron, it get collected in the collector. The growing amplitude of the wave resulting uh, resultingly causes more bunching of electrons while reaching the end of the beginning, thereby causing further amplification of the RF wave inside the tube. Further pro progression of the field along the axis of the tube give rise to amplification of the RF signal. These are basically the velocity modulation uh, working and since already we have discussed that positive term potential is applied at the collector, the positive potential which is applied at the collector is much more than the potential which is applied at the helix. So, the electron will move towards the collector and again the same thing magnetic field inside the tube restrict the spreading of beam as the electron poses repulsive interaction. Now, the application of TWT, TWT tubes are highly used in continuous wave radar system. This amplifying uh, tubes are also find application in the broadband receivers for RF amplification. TWTs are also get, uh, get high power output in trans satellite transponders. Since there is no resonant structure is present in the interaction space, thus provide ap amplification up to a wide bandwidth operating range. Now comes the backward wave oscillator. The backward wave oscillator in the abbreviated form is the BWO. It is a special type of vacuum tube used to produce microwave signal in the range of terahertz. Our backward wave oscillator belongs to the group of a traveling wave tube and it generates oscillations at the microwave frequency. So, now comes the difference. TWT ki group mein it, uh, it uh, belongs to the group of TWT, but TWT is an amplifier and it uh, generates oscillations. Backward oscillators are also known as carcinotrons as both PWO and TWB belongs to the same group. So, the principle of operation remains the same. However, there is one variation variations regarding their construction structure and the operating structure. Now, operating principle. The principle of operation of BWO is such that in order to sustain the oscillation inside the tube, a back reflected wave from an perfectly imperfectly terminated that means in this case Zn is not equal to Zl and in this case only when this is not equal to back the signal which is going is reflected back. So, due to this conditions reflected wave from the imperfectly terminated collector and this connector collector is known as the imperfectly terminated collector is uh, realized at a direction opposite to the direction of emergence of, ele emergence of the electron. Electrons are emerging in this case and due to this condition of the electron that is imperfect terminated condition, it is reflected back. This uses the velo principle of velocity modulation in order to build oscillation inside the tube. The wave travels in the opposite direction to the direction of movement of electron that is why it is known as the backward wave velocity. Electrons are reflecting uh, sent uh, moving in this direction and due to the condition that is collector impedance is not perfectly matched, the waves are get reflected. So, the movement of waves are opposite to the direction of movement of electron. So, they are called as the backward wave oscillator. These are the basic construction of uh, our BWO V naught cathode for the generation of electrons, accelerator and the slow wave structure are provided in between. Now, RF termination 
and collector. So, you can able to see that the structure is almost the same as compared to the TWT. To generate the electron beam, electron gun is used and electro cathode generates the electron beam inside the tube. Slow wave structure is present inside the tube that is responsible for the velocity modulation same as we have done in the TWT. The opposite region of the electron gun consists of the collector region from where the ends are not perfectly matched. So, the forward wave get reflected back towards the cathode and received at the output. So, the only difference is, that, uh, is here that collector is not perfectly matched that is why the wave get reflected back. The major and since the reflection occur and since the feedback and the uh, we know in all the components of the oscillator feedback is essential for providing the oscillations. The major component present in WT is an attenuator which is absent in the case of a BW. So, if you are remembering the attenuator is responsible for avoiding the oscillations in the case of a TWT and in this case that is why attenuator is not present so as to cause the oscillation to occur. When the cathode is heated then a velocity electron beam is emitted by the electron gun. Tube consists of a slow wave structure which is provides the velocity modulation in perfectly matched collector at the opposite end of the gun generate reflection and electron being traveling with certain velocity experience retardation when the field inside the tube is maximum when while when the field inside the tube is minimum then the electron travel with the usual velocity basically the our complete interaction of the velocity modulation. Now, we are have the advantage and the disadvantages of the our BWO that is BWO provide wide range of tunability by the variation in collector voltage because collector voltage is not matched. So, we can have the wide variety of tunability and wide variety of frequency. We generate oscillation that so high frequency stability it shows the ability to produce sharp desired signal at the output because we can vary the collector voltage. The reason for everything lies here. It is less efficient in compares reason to TWT than clistrons. The fixed spacing between the helical ring of the slow wave structure leads to cause a limiting factor over the bandwidth. So, here is the major advantage and disadvantage which are associated with the BWT and now here comes the end of the microwave sources. Uh, you have already st studied about the different microwave sources. So, before again revise it and before revising it go through the slides lectures which are which contains the velocity modulation because in each and every microwave devices source which is our source basically the velocity modulation plays a very unbunching process plays a very important role and for every one amplification oscillation the main thing which is occurring inside that is the velocity modulation bunching process. The main principle of each and every device is the this one. So, here comes the end of the microwave sources that is the TWT and the BWO. Thank you.